I use the Human Interface Device specification via the HID API C language library to enable host programs I write to communicate back and forth directly with my USB keyboards, like my Georgie stenographic keyboard here. It works great, but when I was just starting out writing these host programs, every time I would attempt to make a connection to the Georgie, sometimes it would work, sometimes not. The failures seemed to happen at completely random intervals, making things really frustrating. Was the problem my code? The device? A platform-related issue, in my case macOS? Something else? I had no idea. Let's illustrate the problem by creating a simple host program based on an example in the HID API GitHub repo. We'll start off by initializing the HID library. In order to get access to those functions, we need to import the HID API header. We'll then create a new pointer to a HID device. And we'll call that the handle. And that will contain the result of calling the HID open function where we pass in the vendor ID and product ID and we'll leave the serial number being null. For the vendor ID and product ID, we'll initialize a few enumerated type variables to store them. We'll store both of them as hexadecimal numbers. Next, if we're unable to open up the HID device, then we'll just print out that we were unable to open the device. And then we'll call HID exit and return out from the program. And in order to use printf, we just need to go and quickly include the standard IO library. Next, now that we know that we have the handle, we want to be able to get the manufacturer string. And that requires that we pass in the handle, a buffer to store the manufacturer string, and the max length of the buffer. And the buffer is going to be a list of wide character types of length max length. We'll add max length to the enumerated types. And include in the wide character library. After we've gotten the manufacturer string, we just simply print it out. Then we close the device. And finally, finalize the HCMI library and exit. Now let's compile and run the program. We we'll use GCC to compile and we'll leverage package config to bring in all of our libraries and flags. We'll 
be compiling the host C file and outputting it as a host executable. Now let's run it. Unable to open device. Yep, we opened it. Unable, 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 again unable, again and again. Keep on failing. Oh, but we got it here. These look like some pretty random failures to me. It seems that HID API is seeing multiple devices for a given vendor and product ID, and the HID open function is just returning us the first device from the list that it gets, which we sometimes cannot open. It turns out that in order to get an accurate hit, aside from the vendor and product ID, we also need the device's usage page and usage information, values that describe the intended use of a device. So, it looks like we will be better off enumerating over the device list ourselves and doing our own checks for a device's usage values. Let's make those changes now. First, we'll get rid of our reference to HID open and reinitialize the handle to just null. Next, we'll set up a couple of pointers to some sets of HID device info structs. They'll be to a pointer to the devices list themselves and our current device. Next, we'll make the devices point to the result of calling HID enumerate with the vendor ID and product ID. And then we'll set the current device to be the same as the devices for now as we begin to iterate over it. Create a while statement and we'll say while the current device is not null, we will initialize a few unsigned short integers. And within that HID device info struct, we'll grab the usage page. And we'll do the same thing for the usage value. Then we'll just print out that we are opening the device and put in the usage and usage page values in there. Next, we attempt to open the path of the current device's path attribute. And if we are unable to do that, we just say that we are unable to open the device and then we repoint the current device pointer at the next device in the list and continue on. If we have found the handle, then we'll say that we found the device, success, and we'll break out of this while loop. And all of this code here, we only need to do now if the handle is valid. And then if it's not, we say that we were unable to open any devices for the product ID and vendor ID combination.
Now let's recompile the host file and rerun it. As you can see that we're opening all of the devices, but we're skipping them if we're unable to open them until we get a success. Sometimes we'll have to enumerate through all of the devices. Sometimes we won't have to. But it is clear that we are getting a successful connection every time with usage value 61 and usage page value FF60. Now, since every connection we open exerts a time cost, let's change the host code to skip devices that we now know will not give us a successful connection while still handling the possibility that we may not know the usage values of other devices we may want to connect to in the future. First thing that we'll do is go and add in the usage page and usage values to the enumerated types. So usage page FF60 and the usage value will be just 61. And we'll leave a little note up there saying that in the event that we don't know these values at all, we should just set them to be zero. Next, we want to initialize a new integer that will define whether the usage is actually known. And then that will determine how we end up enumerating through the devices. Now, after we have determined the usage page and usage, if at that point the usage is known and the current device's usage page and usage values are not equal to the values that we specified in the enumerated types, then we should skip opening them. And just continue on to the next device in the list. If we haven't found the handle, but the usage is known, then we know that we don't want to open that device at all. And we just want to break out of this loop. Otherwise, we should continue enumerating through the devices. So we recompile and then rerun. And then as you can see, all of the devices that do not match the usage values that we specify are skipped and we only attempt to open the device that we know we're going to be able to open successfully. It works. And successful connections are now made much faster, even if you do not hit the target device on the first try. So if you ever find yourself writing custom firmware that connects to HID devices, remember to always include the usage values as well as vendor product IDs to ensure that you can get a stable connection.